This is a third and final session of our three-day live event. And today, we're going to be talking about how to use existing technology, whether it's your website or social media, to help convert these customers that we've been focused on over the last two days. So remember, day one, we talked about how to really target and, and identify your ideal customer, your ideal client. Yesterday, we spent some time talking about how to research and find where your clients are talking about the very products and services that you may be offering. And today, we're going to look at once we've identified them and connected with them, how do we then get them to take the next step with us? So we've got about another 40 to 45 minutes today that we're going to go through a lot of material. So hold on tight. Here we go. So today, we're talking again about converting clients using web and social media. One of the things that we want to be able to do is to make sure that we understand the different platforms that are available and the types of things that people can do to connect with you. And so we're going to take a look at some stuff. So basically what we, we already did is a little bit of a recap over the last couple of days of what we've done. Uh, we, we've had other sessions where we actually do review the customer avatars and the content strategy that other people have uh, shared. Today, we're going to kind of shift a little bit away from that at the moment. But just know that there are examples of, of customer avatars that we can share with you later if, if that's of interest and also content strategy sessions that we've hosted and done um, internally as well as for our clients. So we'd love to share that with you. So if you have any questions with that, reach out to us. We'd be glad to help you out and share that with you. But let's talk about your website, right? So <clears throat> one of the things that we tell a lot of our clients is that your website is a full-time employee. It works 24 hours a day seven days a week. It never asks for time off, never has sick days. It doesn't require any benefits, doesn't require any salary, but it is something that is actually usually the first place that a, a potential customer is going to learn about your business. So we like to call your website literally by a title that would be within an organization as the director of first impressions. Now, on a traditional business, a traditional office, if somebody walks in through your front door and they see somebody sitting at the front desk and that person has messy hair, their clothes are torn and tattered, they smell really bad, they've got a bad attitude, that does not reflect very well on your business. And most people would never allow that to happen in the first place. So they would actually um, hire somebody, hopefully that would represent their business well. And so when we think about websites, your website is very much the same way. If, if we haven't given that website enough attention and, and put enough thought into it, enough design into it to make it look uh, very clean, very professional, very engaging, then we run the risk of having a problem of potentially scaring away potential clients because of, of how they come across your website. So if your website's not in good shape, there's going to be some problems with that. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit more about that in a few minutes here. But I also want to talk about where we're going today. The other things we're going to discuss and go over is what is a call to action and how do we use it? What, what does it mean to have a call to action on your website? We'll talk about the different types of calls to action and conversion goals that relate to that. But this is basically what we will be going over uh, as part of today. And then also we'll be looking at social media platforms, and we'll talk through different ones that are applicable for different reasons within your organization. And we'll go ahead and discuss that as well. And finally, we're going to look at conversion tracking. And so we'll talk a little bit about Google and Facebook pixels and what that all means. It's just kind of a, a quick flyover. We're not going to get into the details of that, but there is some things that Google and Facebook will allow you to do that gives you a really good picture of what happens between your, uh, your website any ads that you might be running, any posts that you're doing on Facebook or Instagram, and what happens when they get to your website, and then how to convert all that into some really valuable data. And as always, what we usually do is at the end of this, we'll have a free gift, and it's another downloadable document with some really good best practices related to your website, your social media platforms. There's a worksheet on, on which platforms make best sense for you and your business. So we'll go through that in a little bit. So let's get started. Let's keep going. So um, we'll go ahead and skip that slide. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But um, 
the old adage, the old saying is you only get one chance to make a good impression. And the funny part is in the digital world, that is absolutely hands down a true statement. When somebody gets to your website and, it, and maybe even your social media page or your Google business page, if it is messy and disorganized and hard to find the things that they're looking for, if it doesn't look good on mobile devices, for example, or maybe a tablet, then all of a sudden we're running into a situation where you're making a very, very poor impression. And nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, those customers, potential customers are just going to go somewhere else. We actually call that a bounce rate on a website. We're not going to talk about the details of that today, but there is something known as a bounce rate, which means when somebody comes into your website and the amount of time that they spend before they leave your site is called the bounce rate. If that, if that happens, if you have a high bounce rate, then that's a very good indicator that your customer or potential customer is either not finding what they need, or maybe it's not the right customer. So maybe if we don't understand who our customer is, if we get a bunch of weird people to our website that don't relate to our business or product, we're going to have a high bounce rate and we're going to wonder what's happening with all of our other um, strategies and things that we've talked about up to this point. So again, your website is your first, your director of first impressions. And we're going to show you a couple of examples of things that we've done internally, uh, some projects we've worked on with various clients. But one of the things that we do, we've, we, oh my gosh, in the history of what we've done here at Shoes Optional, we've done a lot of different types of websites over the years. I've, I've actually been in this industry since 1996. The first website we ever built was coded by hand in HTML and it looked horrible. But back then, so did everybody else's. But at least we got started um, in the last probably five to eight years, we've gone all in with using WordPress. And the reason we do that is, is WordPress is really an amazing platform to quickly get a website going. There's some really good themes, which is really what makes the website look and function. And we use one very specific theme. Uh, we're not going to go into that today, but we actually have a webinar that's that's going to be coming up in probably sometime in 2022 called WordPress Essentials. And man, it, it goes deep. It's a six week webinar that literally d d dives into everything about WordPress, how it started, what the versions of it are, some of the plugins and all the things that, that make sense within the WordPress world. And we, we do a deep dive on the theme that we use for almost every website we build. Part of the reason why we chose that theme relates to today's discussion about what it means to have a website that has a really clear director of first impressions. So what one of the key criteria to that is that it looks good on every device. We call it responsive design. And what responsive design means is it doesn't matter what device or um, whether it's a desktop, a mobile device, a tablet, it doesn't matter the device. What it does is it responds to the screen area that's visible and they call that responsive design. So we do a lot of that in everything we do. The theme we use does that hands down right out of the box. We don't have to come up with a lot of extra code and a lot of extra CSS and all the weird stuff that goes on behind stuff. We don't have to worry about that. So that's one of the reasons why we use that as a theme. But let's take a look at a couple things. We're gonna sh shift over here and I'm gonna share a different screen that shows you one of the websites we recently uh, have built and what that looks like from a customer's perspective. And I'll share that with you right now. And here we go. All right. So what you should be seeing is uh, make sure. Sorry. Here it is. Um, here it is. All right. So there's a couple things you're going to see on the screen, and we're going to talk about this a little bit. Yesterday, we mentioned some of the extensions that we use within the Google world or not the Google world, the Google Chrome environment. And you'll see a, an extension that's over the top of this particular website that has some analytics. As I talk about analytics a little bit later in today's discussion, we'll tell you a little bit about what this thing is. This actually plugs right into Google Analytics and shows me right over the screen some of the stuff that's happening on this page. I'm going to close that for now and, and show you this. So again, we've been talking a little bit about this customer um, over the last couple of days. This is their website. And what I love about their website is it is there's bright colors. There's all kinds of different calls to action. Like I mentioned, we're going to talk about those in a minute. But content is very well organized. It's very clear what he is trying to get people to respond to. And he highlights very well the information that he and his practice, his brand precedent, what they do within the dental world. So they're not just your kind of your standard dentist. They actually provide really um, 
advanced solutions for things like TMJ and dental implants and sleep apnea and other things. So you'll see all of that on there. We have some really good client testimonials. We even have some Google Maps in various locations. We even have things like contact forms that make it very easy for them to schedule an appointment and take the next step. But one of the things I love about this is if I start to resize this, and again, we talked about this being a responsive design, it starts to quickly change into something that if I was on a, for example, a, um, a tablet, the tablet would look more like this. So I have the logo and my, my navigation now changed to a, a drop down navigation. All of my pictures are still in a certain place and all of my content now stacks on top of each other. So if I'm on a, on a um, tablet, I can scroll through and, and still find all that same information. And I didn't have to build two or three different websites. It's built in one framework. The theme we use makes it automatically that way. So if I, again, if I had it more as a mobile device, so this is more what it would look like on mobile. We still have the same content. It all works very well. It flows extremely well. And again, the navigation just drops down and I can get to other stuff. There's even a, a clear call to action, even on the mobile device. So that's just kind of an idea just to let you know of what a, a website with a clear directive about being a director of first impressions looks like. It's very, very engaging, very um, just really high impact photography, high impact phrases and, and concepts. All of that are is part of how we build these websites. So that's your director of first impressions. Now, one of the things that we were just talking about, we'll go back to our presentation and we'll go through uh, the next section here. And this is the call to action. So one of the things that I want people to understand is if your customers don't know how to take the next step with you, then most likely they won't. I know that sounds really obvious, but that's actually a pretty simple yet true statement. So in other words, if we don't have a clear next step, then clients aren't going to convert or prospects aren't going to convert to clients if there's not a clear next thing that you expect them to do. So a clear next step is how conversions happen. So we're going to go back to our, our website and I'm going to show you various types of calls to action. And we're going to actually even look at some things that relate to landing pages and other things uh, and how they all function. So one of the things you'll notice, first of all, right here on this website, in the upper right-hand corner, we did this specifically by design, you'll see that it says schedule a consultation. And it's a different color, it draws your eyes, it's actually the, that orangish color has been kind of studied to show that it really brings people's attention to that. And then, it, and then once they see what that is, it actually allows them to quickly take a next step. We typically shy away from red buttons because that has that connotation of stop. And sometimes green buttons get a little kind of confusing because they're not sure what, what's happening. This orange color, sometimes even some other, other um, brighter colors usually have a way of attracting that attention and allowing them to take the next step. So one of the things that we've done is very quickly, they can schedule a consultation. Doesn't matter what page they're on. If I go into any of these other pages, that button is always going to be there at the very top of the screen. On mobile devices, it's always in the drop down when I do that. So clear call to action, right? The next thing is you'll see on the bottom of every page, we actually have all three locations and phone numbers. So there's a quick way to get a hold of somebody. There's an actual uh, uh, page, like on the home page, there's actually a form that people can fill out as they begin to read through that. They can also find specific directions and get right to the location that's closest to them. Uh, this contact form goes right to the front desk in a way that allows them to quickly follow up and schedule a consultation. It doesn't give them, they don't schedule it here, but what they do is they request an appointment time and a desired appointment date. So we're, we're providing a quick way for people to, to connect and express that they're interested in an appointment. Now we also do what are called landing pages. And so landing pages are a little bit different than your normal pages. This page is actually hidden from the navigation. But one of the things you'll see is there's uh, multiple calls to action throughout this page. First off is this phone number right here is clickable as well as this button. So if we're sending somebody from a Google ad or a Facebook campaign to this page and, and it's related to TMJ, then all of a sudden they're quickly going, gosh, I'm, I'm going to call somebody. I, I need help. My 
there's so much drama or pain in my jaw. I really need to get help. They can call and talk to somebody, obviously during business hours, but they can also leave a message and somebody will follow up. We also have a quick contact form. This is not one that's detailed, but it gives them enough options to go ahead and quickly request help. But as you scroll down, there's other things that start to happen. We have some video and we have some other testimonials. We have that same contact form farther down the page. And then we also have more video and more information near the bottom. So when we talk about a clear call to action, we want people throughout the site to be able to find a way to take the next step. In this case, in this particular client, the next step is typically to talk to somebody about how precedent can help them with whatever it is that they're facing. If it's jaw pain, is it sleep apnea, is it dental implants? Somebody will answer the phone and walk them through the next step. The same thing with the form is this allows them to do that. Now, there are other types of what we call opt uh, next steps or what we call conversion goals. And one of them is on our own website under shoes optional, one of the things that you'll see is that sometimes in the bottom corner, we will actually, I'm gonna log, oh, there it is. So we actually, you'll see this on some sites where you actually have a bot, a little bot that pops up where people can actually ask questions and a, and a automated response will happen. This gets pushed into our CRM. So it allows us to actually connect and find ways to do that. We also have some pages where you'll see pop-ups. Those are fun call to actions. They can be overwhelming and annoying for a lot of people if they're not done right. If you have one that takes over the whole screen, the, the opt-in rate on that is extremely low, by the way. We, we kind of shy away from that. We do have some, some sites where we might have a fly-in that pops up near the bottom. Maybe it pops off the side where it doesn't overwhelm the person. But anytime somebody's trying to look through information and you take over the screen and get and say opt in, nine times out of 10, people are not going to do that. They may actually get frustrated and leave. Um, I know my wife does. I know I've done the same thing. So be careful in, in how you use pop-ups. But one of the things that's really effective is a call to action that relates to what we would call a conversion goal might be them giving you their email address for downloading a specific document. So maybe you have an ebook or you have, a, um, you know, best practices, five, five things that you should do to, um, to deal with job pain, for example, and you're getting contact information in exchange for giving them something of value. So those are all different types of calls to action. And we wanted to make sure you kind of saw how all of that worked in real time, both on, on our own website, but also on one of our clients' websites. The next thing we want to kind of take a look at is the following here. So we talked about calls to action. The next thing is this. Let's talk about social media because obviously your website is what we call your director of first impressions. In our opinion, the website is absolutely foundational to everything you do. Everything should link back to your website, including all the content you write. Even if you post things on Facebook or Instagram or other social media platforms, you want it to come back to your website or even pull from your website in the sense of maybe sometimes it pulls in images or graphics or other things or video. Your website has to be the place where they wind up because that's where the clear next step should always be. So even if they land on a blog post way deep in your site, guess what? That's a great place to have other calls to action that relate to that blog post. So maybe you're writing content that's speaking something important to that customer. And if you're doing that and they land there, you still want to have a next step. So maybe at the end of the blog article or maybe in a, a widget on the side or maybe something that's near the top or even right in the middle of the blog post, you may have a quick little call to action that says, if you're interested in learning more about this blog or you're interested in learning more about this product or service, um, click here and somebody will reach right out to you. And maybe it's a quick, quick opt-in form or a little form where they give you you know, they fill out a name and an email address. All of that's important to kind of consider when you talk about how to convert on the website. Now, your social media is slightly different. Obviously, when we talked about customers and, and finding out what's in their mind and doing customer research, or even doing things like um, creating content for our customers that are going to, you know, we're going to engage and we're going to have conversations with them. We need to figure out where they're at. So, you know, the, a good rule of thumb for probably most organizations is that most of your customers will most likely have a Facebook profile. Now, that doesn't mean that they use it all the time, but most of them will be on Facebook 
at some level, at some point. More and more Instagram um, is becoming more and more popular. So a lot of people are spending time on there. And so we'll talk about how Instagram works a little bit. Just in case you aren't aware, Facebook owns Instagram. They also own several other assets and now they're changing their name to Meta. And there's a whole nother webinar for that somewhere down the road. We'll talk about virtual reality and we'll talk about some pros and cons of all of that, but that's not for today. So today, you know, Facebook and Instagram are probably the most widely used platforms out there. You'll see things with TikTok, for example. That's another platform that's extremely popular. It's more of a younger demographic, but it is it is growing in popularity. There's other platforms like Pinterest. There's things like um, even YouTube has their own version of, of kind of a TikTok channel called YouTube Shorts. That's that's a competitive thing, but it, more and more people are starting to digest smaller bits of content in these other platforms. Um, one of the ones that's also it is considered social media, but a lot of people think it more of it as a um, as a networking platform is LinkedIn. So one of the things that I share with most of my clients is that LinkedIn is an amazing resource to build what we call um, a, a knowledge base. It, it, we call it top of mind. It's also a place where you can um, do things like talent acquisition. So talent acquisition is looking for somebody, maybe you have a job posting or you're, you're trying to network and find somebody that can help in your own business. Um, it, so that's all, all part of what LinkedIn can be, but it's a great place to show your authority and to show your knowledge in, in a specific product or service industry. So definitely pay attention to LinkedIn. I believe it's an, uh, one that can really um, grow your business and impact uh, ultimately a place where you can connect with your customers. So again, we're going to kind of pop out of here and we're going to go back into a couple of things and look at both Facebook and Instagram specifically related to, uh, to the precedent brand that we were showing you earlier. And we'll take a look at some of the things that we see that tie into all of those. So if I go into Facebook, <clears throat> one of the things that you'll see pretty quickly is over here, we've converted their Facebook and Instagram pages into what's called the Facebook business suite. And so there's a whole bunch of tools here. I can still publish and promote right in here. But if I go into the business suite version of it and I go under my my management tools for precedent, it allows me to do a lot more. It shows me kind of a lot of those types of things. But if I hit create post, what it's going to allow me to do is in one spot, and there's all these little, there's always tutorials that it will do. I can, I can have it post directly on both right from this platform. And I can put the text, I can add media or video. I can do, you know, Facebook text and Instagram text. If I click over here, it tells me what am I going to put on Instagram and Facebook. I can do all of that right here and I can hit publish directly. Or once I actually have something here, um, and let me do add media, just add a photo real quick and just show you what, we're not gonna publish this, but we'll just show you kind of what it, what it starts to look like. <clears throat> and all right, so if I hit add, now, now I can hit the publish or I can come down here and do save as a draft or I can schedule a post. This is extremely important because I know a lot of times people get overwhelmed with content, both in blogging and, and social media is I don't have time to sit there all day and post every 10 minutes or every two hours or every five hours and post something. But that's what the schedule is. So I can literally come in on a Sunday, spend half a day putting together a bunch of posts get them scheduled for the next two weeks and never have to think about it again. So powerful way to use social media. But now let's take a look at some things. I'm going to go ahead and discard the changes and I'm going to actually go back to their Facebook main page, the way the audience would see it. And what the audiences will see here is, is an opportunity for me to create calls to action within the content that we post. So again, we talk about, you know, we create the, the, uh, the content, we talk about, in this case, it's same day dental implants, but we always have an option here that says learn more by going to such and such. We also use hashtags, which is helping you know people engage with the content, but that gives us a way to have them, hey, learn more by going here. Now there's all kinds of other call to action things you can do within Facebook. You can create uh, what we call more buttons. You can do offers and you know depending on what you're, what you're trying to do, 
there are tons and tons of call to action tools and buttons here that you can add to your Facebook page, to your post individually. You can create live events. You can do Facebook live with video. There's a lot of ways to engage with your customers. So again, Facebook is probably a really good starting point for most businesses because a, a good portion of their client base will be on Facebook or Instagram or both. And so sometimes the posts that go into Facebook might be different. We actually do the same ones. The only difference is we will often tell in the Instagram posts that if you're interested in learning more, click on the link in your bio. So one of the things that Instagram unfortunately doesn't do a lot of is they don't allow you to have clickable links in the post that you put there. So I could even put this out here. So that's the same post that was on Facebook we were just looking at. And see right here, it says, learn more about the pros and cons. Now I can copy and paste this in my browser, but I can't click on it. It doesn't let me get into that post. So the only option we have is for people to go here and basically say, um, you know, click on, click on the link in the bio. And then this would actually go into certain things. So we can actually have it go directly to that blog post if it's there, or we can have a, a landing page. There's actually some really good resources where you can use something called Linktree, where you can actually have it go to a, a splash page that has multiple links in it. So that's an, another strategy that people use to create a quick call to action to get people to engage and to basically get over to your website. Your website is where probably 90, maybe 80 to 90% of your conversions are going to happen is right there. So we'll, that's where we want to push people. We always want people to go back to your website because your website has more tools. You own the website, by the way, in most cases. I mean, obviously it's on a server, it might be hosted with another company, but you own that platform for the most part. So if something ever happens and your Facebook page gets shut down, your Instagram page gets shut down or any of those other platforms decide that they don't want you on their service, you still have your website and you've always been pushing people to your website so that ultimately you have the ability to own your own content, own, own the, the narrative that happens around your brand and your company, right? So that's important to, to keep in mind. Last thing we're going to take a look at, I'm going to switch back to our presentation real quick. Last thing we're going to look at is what we call the... Uh, Google and, and Facebook conversion tracking. So let's talk a little bit about that. So one of the things that, that Google and Facebook both provide, Google started it, Facebook saw the value of it and added it to their, their platform. Google has the ability for you to set up what are called conversion goals. Now, we don't have a lot of time. We got less than 10 minutes, or about 12 minutes before our webinar is over today. So Hold on tight. This is going to get a little bumpy because we're going to go fast. We do get into this in our roadmap in a lot more detail later. We get into conversion goals and monetary stuff. But here's, here's where we're going to go. I'm going to show you quickly. It's going to take, take a moment or two to digest what I'm about to show you. We are talking about conversion goals. And so here is an example of the conversion goal. So I, I'm logged into Google Analytics. And under Google, Google Analytics, we have set up a conversion goal that if somebody comes to the Locations Florida page and they do certain things on that page, that we want to track the number of goals and, and conversions that have happened, right? So we, over time, we can actually pull back a lot of data and look at different times. Right now, it's within the last, I think, 10 days. Uh, we've had one goal completed uh, when we were running really high volume of ads, we were seeing conversion goals reaching, you know, 5, 10, 20 a day. So we'll talk about those strategies in other sessions, but conversion goals are absolutely a critical way of saying when somebody clicks on an ad, they come to a blog, they come from a social media campaign, and they come to a website and they fill out a form and that form converts, meaning it, it sends you their information and maybe sends them to a thank you page that's a successful conversion, right? Now, one of the things about that is, is understanding what is the value of a client. And a lot of times people don't spend time identifying in their business the value of a customer and what that means to your business. So say, for example, this is, this is a, our dental client that we've been talking about through this whole time. If he got a, a single TMJ surgery that was 10 or 15 thousand dollars or 15 to thirty thousand dollars depending on all the stuff that goes on with it 
if he if he just got one of those every three or four or five days or maybe one two or three of those a month and he only spent two or three thousand dollars in Google ads to get that conversion that's a pretty good conversion rate but we want to be able to understand in any business what are the things that drive revenue and cash flow and the more we do that can we get to a point where we really define a conversion goal and what it means to my bottom line the reason why we want to look at that ultimately is we want to be able to kind of create a, a, a world where we go, gosh, if I spend $100 and I run Google ads and those ads come to my website and somebody fills out and becomes a customer and that customer value is say, I don't know, $500. Then if I spend $100 and I get three of those, that's, that's $1,500, excuse me, right? So if I invest $100 and I get $1,500 worth of revenue, that's not a bad exchange. Now, obviously, that with products and services, things vary as far as prices. And maybe you're not going to spend $100 for just to hit one client. That $100 may reach, uh, like we said, three. But that $100 may reach 10 people. It may reach 50 people, depending on who comes into your website and how they convert from there. Now, we don't get to track all the conversions, but you can track everything from phone numbers. To, to forms, there's an entire e-commerce um, flow that you can set up where it says if they go to, and maybe you're ad advertising a specific product um, on Google and you want you know that this product has a high profit margin. So if it costs you $3 to get the client to your website and they buy the product and you make you know $30 off of that, that's still a good um, return on your investment. So those are things that we wanna take a look at when it comes to conversion goals and tracking is we want to understand the value of when somebody converts. So again, long-term, these are, these are bigger strategies to help you understand that when, when we've identified our key client, like we started off on day one, we identify who they are. We know that our, our client is ideal for us because they meet certain criteria that we've defined in our first webinar. The second webinar, we talked about communicating and, and engaging with them. And the more content they digest from us, the more value they receive from us, the more likely they are going to take that next step and become a customer. But we're not just doing all those first two steps just to hope uh, willy-nilly that somebody's going to convert. We want to understand what the value of that is. So if I'm spending time and effort finding my customer, communicating and connecting with them, I know that there's costs associated with that, including, like we said, ads and Facebook campaigns and all kinds of stuff. But I also want to know that all of that effort, I want to monetize that and look at it and go, OK, I am seeing a good return on my time and my effort and my my costs. And I'm getting I'm seeing my business grow. And guess what? Hopefully, if we did a, that first step right. Hopefully, we're getting the right clients, the right customers into our business, which means our business is going to be healthier. We're going to serve the clients better that, that fit within our, um, our desired outcome. And that's, that's why we're doing this. That's why these webinars have been here for the last couple of days, right? So I want to share a couple, one other quick thing. So Facebook has a very similar platform to this, by the way. This is, we just decided to look at Google, but Facebook actually has a pixel that you can drop into your website. And there's certain ways to get that put in your website properly. If you don't know how to do that or your, your web hosting company or your web company doesn't do that for you, let us know. We'd be happy to help you with that. It's not, it's not a difficult thing. Uh, we can do that uh, on your behalf. But anyway, Facebook has some tracking pixels that do the same thing where you can see based on everything that you've spent money on that it actually allows you to... Um, it allows you to monetize those efforts. Those are all the things that you want to, want to pay attention to. So our last little thing here that we're going to look at for today and then we're going to close out is our... We're going to share with you our client conversion best practices and social media worksheet that we put together as, as, um, as a participant to, day, to today's um, webinar. This will be something that's free. And available to you to use. So one of the things I want to do is have you take a look at this and we'll kind of scan through it real quick together. But this will be available on that link that we, we will be sending out to you when this 
is over. So we talked a little bit about this. One of the things that we want to share with you, there's some best practices and some really good content on this that will help you understand more about what, what your website should do, um, different tips, things like even like image sizes and widths. We put in some really good places to find some good imagery. There's some free images. There's some paid places where you can get images as well. We also talk about um, some ways to use your social media effectively. So there's some really good tips and, and tricks and information here. Um, picking the right platform. We also include some interesting statistics that might be useful in helping you identify where is your primary target spending most of their time. And then finally, the last part of it is, is what we call a, a social media use survey. So this is a good way for you to understand not only how you use it, but potentially how your customers are using social media and to ultimately identify the right platform for what you're trying to accomplish. So thank you so much for spending the last three days with us. Um, I know there's been a lot of information on day one, two, and three. And what we're going to do from here, typically we, we open this up several times throughout the year for people to just be part of. There's no cost to any of the things that we've just told you about. We do have a roadmap that's being released sometime in the early part of next year. So next year is going to be January 2022. You will see this webinar. Uh, this webinar, again, is going to be offered. So if you have any contacts, friends, colleagues, people that you think would find this helpful and useful, please send them our way. We'd love to have them drop on um, this next version of this when we do this in January. But we also want you to pay attention to your inbox because we will be sending you some information about the full roadmap where we get into a lot more detail. We have a lot more resources. There'll be a lot, of, a lot more time for interaction where we actually take time and, and stop the presentation and work one-on-one -on -one with you. Or, or you know, if there's more people in the room, we'll work with, with the group to identify and, and solve specific problems. So we appreciate you being here today. Appreciate you, your time from yesterday and the day before. We look forward to having you join us in 2022 as we release all kinds of content that we feel will be of great value to you and your business, to your lifestyle, the things you want to accomplish. That's what we're here to do. So thank you for your time today. Have an amazing Christmas. We'll see you next year. <music>